Welcome back to Taylor Talks Tales. Today, I am about to start my backpacking journey. It's very early in the morning on Sunday, July 12th, and I am finishing packing up and getting all of my gear on, and we're about to head out. Uh, we're gonna do, I think it's about a five hour drive to the other side of the Olympic Peninsula where we're going to be hiking from where my house is. But, I want to kind of show you what I'm geared up in. So, I am ready for all kinds of rainy weather. It's supposed to be mostly rainy on our trip, which is totally fine. I have backpacked in the rain multiple times, so I'm not too worried about it. So, I've got no cotton on whatsoever. So, first we have my wool poly socks, and then we have my nice rain pants slash hiking pants. They hold a lot of things and have a lot of pockets. Super comfy, feel almost like I'm wearing sweatpants. And I have multiple layers on. Got at least two under here, then this poly shirt, and then poly kind of like polar fleece type material for that shirt. And then I've got my green rain jacket. And of course we have my Explorer hat, which is a wool felt blend, which I love this hat. It's great in the winter, it's great spring, summer, fall, all kinds of weather. This is a perfect hat. I have two more like it because it's just great. And then of course the only cotton thing I have on my body right now is this bandana, which not only are bandanas super useful in survival, but it'll also act as my mask in case I encounter anybody in the woods. I don't know if I will or not. Um, we're going on a fairly light trail, I would say. I don't expect a lot of foot traffic, but just in case I do have this, but hopefully we won't see too many people. I need a need a break. <laughs> and then I have my compass. I actually got this compass when I was going to volunteer for search and rescue. We had a navigation course and they gave us this compass. This is actually really good, very easy to use. Looks cheap, but I actually really like it and think it's very, very accurate. And then my neck knife. If you have never gotten a neck knife before, I highly recommend it if you are going out into the wilderness at all. It's just really handy. You can forget that you even have it on you. And for someone like me who's very small and has to be extremely cognizant of the weight that I'm packing in and packing out in the wilderness, this one, it just, it's so light, so easy to use. I keep the blade super sharp and it's just really, really handy. So that's kind of what I'm wearing. And I will talk to you guys later. I'm going to show you some of my gear once I get out on the trail. Super excited for this. It's been a while since I've gone on a trip and especially since I've been on a backpacking trip. So I will keep you guys posted and I hope you all enjoy and I will see you in a little bit. Now that we are here at Olympic National Park, we are about to start our trek for the first day. We have several miles ahead of us before we get to our first stop, and we'll hopefully be able to get a glimpse of the ocean today. Either that or we may be camping by a lake. We are not sure yet, but I will keep you guys posted and let's get going. Here it is, the Pacific Ocean. We've been hiking 
about five miles or so and then we've hit the coast. We're going to be going along the coast for quite some time. At least not for the evening though, we're going to make camp in about two, three miles or so. But tomorrow we have a big day planned ahead of us, but look how gorgeous this coastline is. Absolutely love it. You can see there's an island just right across over there. In fact, let's go see if there are any tide pools worth checking out. So when you go up here, it's currently low tide. Oh, I know that it's gonna, the tide's going to start coming in pretty soon. in the rocks, got barnacles on there. These little tide pools over here tend to catch very interesting things, ranging from chitons to little baby fish to sea anemones, starfish for sure. I love seeing purple sea stars, also known as the okra stars. So if we can catch some on this trip, that would be super awesome. I don't know if if we will, it's never guaranteed, but I usually see a few on beach trips. So we'll just have to keep an eye out for them. Yeah. It's about it gets a right 8 o'clock or so. Still light out, and it'll be light out for about another two hours because in the Pacific Northwest, our days last a very long time in the summer. Light out. Gosh, like 5 a.m. There's still a glow by 10 p.m. still. It's pretty amazing. And over there you can see my dad. Just checking out. Checking out the landscape. It's just gorgeous. Temperature is perfect. Not too hot. Not too cold. Just lovely. But there are my two bros filtering our water. We're about to head into a dry camp for the evening, which means we won't have access to any fresh water for us to filter. So we're stopping at this little creek that's right by the ocean, getting some good old fresh water, using a really neat pump to filter out anything like Giardia that could be in there. And then we're just stocking up and then we're going to be heading to our regular camp. So my dad and I found this very interesting piece of bone right here on the beach. I have no idea where it came from. My guess is maybe some part of a deer. I have no clue, but it's you know, light but pretty, pretty solid. And because we are heading into Sasquatch territory, who knows, maybe this was a remnant of a Sasquatch dinner. We don't know, but I think it's just really neat. I have a couple pieces of bone like this at home that I found on the beach. For some reason, it seems like there are a lot of bones that collect on the beach. So, just got another chunk right here. So, this thing is tiny, but that is a piece of red sea glass. Red sea glass is one of the rarest types of sea glass. You hardly ever find it. In fact, I have... I'm not one of the serious collectors of sea glass, but I've collected some over the years. And I usually find like blue, green, brown, clear, some purples, but I have never found a piece of red. And I've got this little tiny piece of red sea glass right here. Right there. That is so cool. And again, it's tiny, but I've never found red sea glass before, so this is really neat. So I found this huge chunk of sea sponge right here. It's all dried up and kind of gnarly looking, but it just washed up on the shore. It's all dried out, but this is a, what a sea sponge looks like. And I haven't really found one on the beach before. I think it's really cool and it has this sort of very rough texture to it, but in a way it's also so smooth. And it's very, very light. Strange looking. It's almost Lovecraftian to me, I would say. But very cool. My bro going out on the rocks. He said he found some shrimp in the water. Alright, 
now we are heading out of this area. We're heading back so we can do the last leg of our trek and get camp set up for the night. So we just made it to our campsite. It's right along the beach, which is amazing. And it's the sun has just set, but there's still colors in the sky and a nice glow. And also, I think that island over there it looks a lot like the island that's on the cover of The Troop by Nick Cutter. It's beautiful. So this is our view, nighttime view. We're getting a campfire set up. Somebody left a nice little fire pit there which is really cool. So we're just kind of right along the shore. High tide's gonna kind of come up to where those rocks end and then you've got the beach and then we're just gonna be camping in our three tents over here. So we made it to our first camp spot and it is gorgeous. Nighty night, island from the tree. I am going to be diving into Alderman, Blackwoods, Ancient Sorceries, and other weird stories. First of all, I am tucked away in my sleeping bag. So I'm in a one-person tent. I have a little flashlight tied up there, giving me some reading light. And then I have a little lantern over here as well. So the first story I'm going to be working on tonight... is Smith, an episode in a lodging house. So I'm gonna get through a couple stories, I think. I'm gonna work on that one first. And then, the second story is one of his classics, which is The Willows. I'm really looking forward to it. It is after 10 o'clock, but you can kind of see there's still a little bit of a glow up there. Just a little bit. It's pretty amazing. So, my brothers are cooking something, my dad is already asleep, and I am going to get some reading done. It's morning time now, this is the view from my tent. It's a low tide again, and look how far out the tide actually goes. Really far. It's lower than it was when I showed you guys last night. little overcast, but it's so very pleasant. So I'm walking all the way out. I have to be quick because who knows when the tide is coming in. Unfortunately, I forgot to grab a tide table. It's been like this for a little while, so I'm going to get to the furthest point out there while it's extremely low tide and see what I can see. And then probably have to book it back because the tide does start to come in pretty quick when you're that far out. But let's go see what we can find in all of the little tide pools. There's the campsite from about halfway out on the beach. My tent's the gray one, my brothers are in the orange one, and my dad actually just slept in the hammock because it was pleasant enough to do it. But it's a really neat camping spot. I mean, prime prime area if you want to do stuff at the beach. There's no one around. You haven't seen anyone at all. It's been very nice. Getting closer. Getting to the point where hopefully we may see some sea anemones. I'm still looking for those purple sea stars. I don't think they're going to be around here because they tend to like very large rocks and there are some decent sized rocks here but they are a little too exposed I think for the sea stars to latch on to plus I do know that there's been this uh, sea star sickness going on for the last like couple of years and it seems like the populations have really been dwindling I've been noticing it which is sad but still looking for them that is my goal is to find some sea stars especially the purple ones even though they could be all colors and uh that's just their name. Or jellyfish. Sometimes jellies will wash up 
on the beach and it's always really cool to see them and then they get washed back out and of course moon snails i've found a couple over my years one was huge and i'm seeing if i can spot another one that right there guys is a crab it's the biggest one i've seen so far on this beach anything larger than this has been just dead get my camera to focus this is a hermit crab dory i'm only gonna keep him out of the water for like i'm um, just look minute maybe less than that he'll be okay oh look at that i love the little hermit crabs they're so cute they're all about this size on this beach i haven't seen any bigger than this i've seen some really small ones and i've seen guys about this this big i'll keep you posted if i can find a larger one than this but so far this is about their size so i'm gonna let them go back in the water but just wanted to show you hermit crab right in there it's actually a bigger hermit crab than the one I showed you that one I'm not gonna pick it up because there's something up with its shell I won't hurt it but it's it's pretty big it's more like a quarter size I really like these type of tide pools because look at that sea an enemy you're not gonna get that kind of stuff anywhere close to the beach but you will find them in the tide pools that are really far out and that's huge it's a really big one normally i see them and they're like half that size and it looks so healthy that's amazing yeah we're pretty pretty far out and we go a little a little further see what we can see and then i'm gonna head back because i see some waves they're picking up which means that the tide's probably gonna start to come in very soon so this tide pool has a bunch of sea anemones. So there's another one over there. And then I love the color of that anemone. It's just this vibrant green. And then, let's see if I can get over there if I get my foot in the water. There's some more in there. And there's another one lurking over there. I don't know if we'll pick it up on camera. You can see it in person, but pretty much we're in the furthest tide pools out because then you just get into actually being pretty much in the ocean. And there's the little, the troop island out there. We have two more sea anemones in there. The really neat green color. Love that green color. And yeah, this is basically as far as I'm planning on going. You can see it's getting a little higher. Not not super noticeable yet, but it's getting a little higher. And just look how far from the beach we are. All of this is going to be underwater. Not just underwater, but very deep once that tide comes in. Because the tides here in the area I'm in are pretty high. They aren't as extreme as in the Puget Sound. This is not the Puget Sound. This is actually the Pacific Ocean at this point. And then if we go around that way, we end up in the Strait of Juan de Fuca. But... The tides still here are pretty intense. I love tide pools. I find them to be so fascinating. They're one of my favorite things to look at at the beach. I think because they're always constantly changing. I mean, you closely, you may be able to see the fish in there. And I think they're just overlooked. A lot of people don't really seem to notice how all these tide pools are just teeming with life. But if you take a little bit of time and kind of examine them, there's a lot of really cool stuff to see. So that's why I could spend literally hours here. But I do know we've got to get breakfast going and get packing so that way we can get to another destination, which I think may also end up being... We may camp on the beach again. We'll have to see. It's this tiny little baby anemone just shoved in between two rocks. But I kind of poked at it and it is alive it's i just I find it so amazing these creatures that live in the tide pool area because they're constantly having a changing environment and have to adapt very quickly i was able to get up close to a sea anemone it's just chilling out and this is one that has been entirely closed up it's seriously hard to spot them they kind of look like rocks but they just close up and then they wait for the tide to come back in and they let their tentacles out. 
but there are so many sea enemies on this beach. Yo. I mean, heck, there's another little tiny one right there. They're all over. It's great. Still haven't seen these sea stars though, but I'm gonna keep looking. This right here is the remnant of a sea creature called a chitin. It's dead. The animal is gone and there's like a little bit of kind of flesh remaining. <laughs> Surprisingly, this actually doesn't have a bad odor, but um, I thought it was a shell, so I picked it up because it was like this blue and green, really gorgeous looking, what I thought was a shell and I wanted to just kind of see it and show you. And then I realized this is actually the remnant of a chitin and you can see there was stuff growing on it. Yeah, very cool find. I'm going to put it back in the water, but I just wanted to show you. That is a chitin. That's the living companion to the dead one that was over there. But they are just really interesting. They just latch on to rocks and... Ooh! Do you see a hermit crab? We do. In fact, we see two hermit crabs. They just latch on to rocks and slowly move and that's how they live. Got some limpets here. And you can actually see that one is moving, which is awesome. They suction onto the rock and then they do not let go. It's really, you know, really secure for them. And there's like quite a few over on this rock. But just wanted to show you what they look like when they move. They go very slow. I think it's because they know that the tide is coming in. Looks like the sun's starting to come out, which is awesome. And now it's time for breakfast. Okay, so last night I didn't actually get through much of my book. <laughs> I didn't realize how tired I was, but I did start on Smith, an episode in a lodging house, and I got about halfway through until I ended up falling asleep with my headlamp on and book on my chest. Woke up bright and early this morning to my headlamp dying, but that's okay because I did bring like four headlamps and two little flashlights because I like to have extras of everything specifically for this reason. So when we get to the next campsite, I'm going to probably have some downtime to get more through this book. But so far, so far I'm off to an Good start with the reading at least the story was quite interesting it just i was just super tired so that's why i fell asleep it had nothing to do with the book so i will check in with you guys later we've stumbled upon yet There's more like bones on this spinal cord with other meat attached oh jesus whoa <laughs> oh man yeah mm. maybe maybe this was sasquatch well then there's a leg bone that's not the size of a dog Seem a bit small to have been a deer. Yeah, he was a very young deer. Whatever this was, it is extremely dead. Dead. So we've stumbled upon another body on the beach. This one's more Bottom. intact. We are guessing it is a sea lion. This one still fairly meaty. Maybe it'll attract a scratch squatch. We don't know. But it is pretty icky. Found a live barnacle, a very large one, and it's moving. Wow. You usually don't catch them moving at all. The rest of its mates are all dead. But we still got this one. We found yet another body on the beach. Is this beach cursed? We don't know. Probably. We don't even exactly know what that is. It's still low tide. My brother's gonna go check out this giant rock. Most of this will be underwater in about a couple hours. And we're heading in that direction to go camp. So, my brothers and I think this looks like a turtle, so we're gonna call it Turtle Island. There's a hole. What's inside? Oh my gosh. It's a freaking crab. Say hi! We discovered this skull washed up on the shore. You can see, you can see the spine of the vertebra. What on earth was this? Any type of sea monster? We don't know. So 
I'm not exactly sure what this is. Another dead thing on this cursed beach of death is pretty gnarly looking. It's the new Montauk monster, but now it'll be the Olympic Peninsula monster. We'll see. Wait, I'm not going to get any closer because it's pretty gross. But very, very unusual looking. Whatever this is. Okay, so looks like not only is there a bear right there on the beach, but there are also two deer. The deer are significantly closer to me. But they're just chilling. They're so cute. And they don't seem to be bothered by the bear that is right there, still digging, still probably looking for mussels, clams, oysters maybe, potentially gooey ducks. But the deer are just not bothered. Amazing. Welcome to Washington. Here's the local wildlife just hanging out. So we ended up having our lunch, mainly of just trail mix and some granola bars and stuff. And we're still kind of waiting for these two deer and the bear to give us a little bit of space. We are kind of intruding on their, their habitat, but we don't want to get too close to them. So we will see. We were in no rush to get to our campsite. We are actually fairly close, so at some point when the bear, I'm pretty sure bear's getting some food, and then the deer are just chilling, but we'll just give them a little bit more time, and then we'll be heading towards camp. Hopefully soon. Who knows, though? Well, we may be here for a little while, but we're all comfortable. It's still a nice, beautiful day, and we've got plenty of time to just relax and hang out. I might do some reading. Looks like our bear friend's starting to move. Once the bear is back in the woods, we'll give it a little bit more time and then we can get back onto our journey down the rest of the coast. We're a couple miles from our campsite that we're planning on camping at tonight. Beautiful bear. So neat to see one up close. There he goes. That means we can continue on our stretch. We need to go around that cape there. And we'll have the other campsite. Looks like the deer are also getting ready to go too. They're moving closer. We're packing up our stuff. They're getting a little closer. Hello. One time when I was camping at Orcas Island, there's a campsite there and this deer came up to me and licked me. I wonder if that's going to happen. Off we go. We're actually heading towards where my dad and Noah are. But they're so just laid back. They're enjoying their time on the beach. Right now we're on a very sandy beach. Once we went past that point, the beach is a little different, which is really neat. You don't get a lot of sandy beaches with the fine sand in this area, so this is really, really beautiful. This is the sandiest beach in Washington I have seen. Very finely ground sand. Just very flat and beautiful. My dad and Noah are going to pump some water. We found a freshwater creek that leads right out into the ocean. So we're going to get some fresh water because our next camp may also end up being a dry camp as well. So better stock up on fresh water while we are able to. Getting close to our campsite. We've been hiking all day. It's about six o'clock now. We're gonna get into camp pretty soon. 
that's our destination around those rocks nearby the campsite and make some dinner. I've spotted some otters off the coast. We're hiking some rocks, getting ready to go into camp. Otters are one of my favorite animals, so this is just really awesome to be able to see them. Otters resurface a little further away. Looks like they're swimming out to sea, probably going to get dinner. So cute. One of the otters came back. Okay, so I have never seen this many sea anemones all in one place. This is incredible. Sorry, I don't have to block the view. But look at that. Swear, there's so many in there. And of course the tide is coming in, so I better get get out of here pretty soon. But I just wanted to show how many gorgeous anemones are in here. And there's a sea star hiding in there. There you go. First sea star I have spotted this trip. There's a few stragglers over there. So we're going to be making camp here at this beach, just a little up a ways, but there are no other people at all. Just my bros and I and my dad. This entire beach. All to ourselves. So we're definitely doing the social distancing well. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna set up camp and then make some dinner and then hopefully try their swimming or it's gonna be really cold. Or maybe try kite flying and then I'll probably finish the night up reading. Just heading out on the beach. Sun has set but there's still a beautiful glow. Some beautiful colors. And my brother and I are going to go wait for a comet because we're supposed to be able to see a comet tonight. So we're going to go find a nice spot for that. Hey guys, so I have decided I'm actually going to switch in read Max Brooks' Devolution for the next couple of days and then save Algernon Blackwood's The Willows and The Wendigo for my last night here because I think they'll be a little bit more fitting um, because our last night we're going to be deeper in the woods as opposed to you know, the next couple of days we're still going to be along the coast so I just changed things up so I'm currently starting Devolution it's about 11 o'clock p.m. I'm up kind of late. I'm actually the last one up for the night, but I'm a little wired. I tried to stay up and watch the comet, but we couldn't really see it. It was actually still too bright in the horizon, so fortunately I wasn't able to catch that, but that's okay. I am tucked in my sleeping bag with my awesome book. I've got my headlamp. I'm going to read my headlamp and just see how far I get through, but... You can probably hear the frogs in the back and, of course, the crashing of the waves. It's really nice and very pleasant. Not too hot, not too cold, all nice and cozy, so I'm going to get to reading. Okay, so I just want to point out the eyes of a six-year-old child, eyes that flick constantly from the terror on the screen to the dark, rustling trees outside the window. And my the trees near my tent have been rustling on and off the last couple minutes as I start reading this book. And, just want to mention, I've been to both Ording and my best friend, Lauren, who's been my friend since college, and we are very tight. Sometimes she watches my videos, so shout out to Lauren in case she does, but she does live in Puyallup, so already I'm recognizing a bunch of this stuff, and I'm only five pages in, so I'm in for a treat. So I managed to get a few chapters in last night, and so far everything's really interesting. Not into any excitement yet, but I do like the setup. It's taking place by Rainier in this very green, eco-friendly community, and 
not too much action has happened yet, although there was a tremor that happened. So it's like we're getting closer to the eruption happening. So I can't wait to get into the story a little bit more, especially once uh, the eruption happens. So, so far, enjoyable. I've been there before. There's also another one down in Tacoma. Hey, good morning. So we're on day two. Currently it's on my tent and I've gotten a few more chapters done with Devolution by Max Brooks. And it's very interesting. Um, a couple of the characters I think are maybe a little stereotypical of like the eco-friendly types, but that's okay. I think the setup is really promising and I really enjoy the sort of not quite found footage aspect, but there's like a journal aspect of this book spliced with like some what's supposed to be like NPR transcripts and research and all that. So I do find that super interesting. I love that type of setup for a book. And I just think the idea of a natural disaster and then combined that with creatures like the Sasquatch, I think that's just really, really neat premise. So very, very enjoyable so far and my camping trip's been awesome. The weather is still holding up for us. It's supposed to rain at some point, but so far, so good. So I'm going to get packed up and make myself some Mountain House granola, and then we're going to be on our way for day two. So, see ya in a little bit. So that's my tent. So my dad and Noah are currently pumping using our Katadin water filter. We're filling up all of our water bottles from this creek that leads right from way back in there. Fresh water here and then eventually leads all the way out into the ocean because we are probably not going to have access to fresh water for a little while. Because so we're about to start our seven and a half mile trek. Riley and I pumped last night from here as well so we could do some cooking. but. We're getting our water and then we'll be heading out along the coast around that area and then it'll be a lot of treacherous rocks so it's gonna be a pretty intense day. Found this hat in the woods by the beach. Who knows where it came from. Maybe some explorer got eaten up by unknown creatures in the woods. All right we are heading about to start a seven mile trek. It's a little overcast today, but it's still really nice and haven't seen anybody except for our group in a long time. Which is very awesome. We practically have an entire beach and chunk of the peninsula to ourselves, it feels like. We're gonna get some water and then we've got a pretty intense trek, so I probably won't be able to film much of it, but that's okay. I'll check in with you guys later. Found some more deer. They're just playing in the water, it looks like. Kissing along the beach. Mom and her baby. So cute. Looks like we found a chunk of the sandworm from Beetlejuice dead on the beach. So we've been tracking a little bit, and right now this beach is just completely rocks. The water is way out there. It's like, we found some tracks as well. We've seen a lot of deer, so I'm pretty sure these are deer tracks. Yeah, we've got, we've got quite a way to go still, but we're heading in the right direction. So we have discovered yet another dead thing washed up on the beach. We aren't quite sure what it is. We have some, looks like it could be worms. But yeah, rest in peace. Another, another creature on this cursed beach of death. Found some interesting rocks along the coast here. I kind of think they look like screaming faces. Tortured 
and damned souls. They're really neat. Just erosion over time. Alright, so we're taking a quick break after going through a bunch of very treacherous rocks. You can't really see them anymore, but they're right behind there. A lot of climbing. A couple hours worth really going over all kinds of rocks and tide pools and everything. And then we're going to continue on to camp, but it is very foggy out in the distance. We've made it through the treacherous part. We're on the final leg of the height, and the weather has improved. So now, gorgeous. It's a little after six o'clock, and we're going around this bend, and then hopefully we'll be able to find our campsite. Just taking a quick break. This lovely beach area here before we go get our campsite, but it's just a lovely, lovely evening. Let's see some more rocks up there. Really quick in that tree right there. It's a bald eagle. I've seen a few on this trek so far. That one just seems to be chilling. America. <laughs> so get this, to get to our campsite, we had to go up a rope on the other side and then come down here. Pretty steep, we had to go by rope all the way down. But we made it. Now we're on the other side of the beach where we can get to our campsite. It's very beautiful and there's no one over here. Once again, we have another beach all to ourselves. It is beautiful out. Perfect weather. And my dad is the last one to come down from the giant rope. I mean, it's really tall. It's like hard to put in perspective, but definitely a bit of a challenge, but I'm glad those ropes were there. So this is the view from the campsite we just picked out. Gorgeous. Wonderful, it's by both the makeshift bathroom and the creek so you can get fresh water. But this is where I'm planning on setting up my tent. I've got other space for a tent. And nice little campfire over there. And we'll have a perfect view of the sunset tonight, which is awesome. Also, one thing at this campsite as well is we found a bone. In fact, it is a jaw bone with two teeth. Still continuing on with the theme of the creepy haunted forest and beach. And our own campsite has bones. But it's still gorgeous. Okay, so we've got two tents here and then there's a bivy behind my tent, which is the gray one. This is our camp front view, which Seriously, there are no other people around us. It's pretty amazing. We saw some people earlier today, but not a whole lot. So you kind of go up this little path here. And you walk in. I'll show you what it looks like inside my tent. You kind of just go right on in. I have the rain fly and this already unzipped. The bugs aren't too bad. All I have in there, my pillow which this pillow is fantastic, you just blow it up, it's amazing. And then I have my sleeping pad, sleeping bag, of course, the book I'm reading, Devolution by Max Brooks. And I just keep my camera bag, but that has like all of my personal belongings as well. Contacts, ID, cash, all of my like, or my glasses, and just all the expensive stuff's in there. So I keep it there, but yeah, it's a really nice, great tent for one person, super easy to put up. And while we're cooking dinner, I've decided I want to do a little bit more reading. So tonight we're having Mountain House again. We're doing some more beef stroganoff because I really like that one. Some chili mac and a chicken teriyaki, which I will not be eating that one because I'm allergic to soy. But I will check in with you guys in a little bit. My dad and I are getting ready to pump some water at this really lovely creek. It's also right by the ocean. When you look this way, 
it looks like it's deep woods. But then, turn this way, and the ocean's just right over there. We found some otters. They're so cute. So unlike what we saw earlier, I believe these are river otters. It's a whole little family of them. Oh, they're super close. Can't really tell on the camera, but they're... Oh my gosh, they're coming close. Hello. Right, they're going back up the creek. Alright, so I've made some pretty good progress with devolution. Last night I read about until the 106 page mark. And so far, there's been a lot of eruption with Mount Rainier, and we've been dealing with that. Um, really interesting, because Rainier can totally explode, and it felt uh, very real. Max Brooks has definitely done his research, because I've read up on it. Because, um, you know, my town is not near enough Rainier that we would have to deal with issues, but still it's a disaster that would impact my area. So it's been really interesting. No sign of Sasquatches yet, but um, I know that they're coming pretty soon. The book is actually 286 pages, so I know that it's going to be happening very soon. So can't wait to get more into this tonight. We're going to have a really busy day today. It's probably going to be our most challenging day hike-wise because we end up going about eight-ish miles over very rocky terrain. It's going to be very intense. Um, yesterday was pretty intense as well because you would think hiking mostly on the beach and along the beach would be pretty easy, but you actually have to climb over tons of rock because these are rocky beaches. We've got to scale hills, basically doing some rock climbing at times, and when you've got a heavy pack, it's pretty intense. So today's going to be a very busy day. I'm hoping we'll be able to see some more seals, more porpoises, and more sea otters. We've seen a lot of wildlife and love bald eagles and just so many awesome critters. So I'm hoping to see some more of that. I'll try to keep you guys posted, but today's going to be our most challenging day for sure. So I don't know how much filming I will be doing on our trek. I'll probably just end up doing some filming when we actually get to camp. So thanks for coming along with me. I will... See you guys in a little bit. This is the view right outside my tent. It is kind of foggy and misty today. Not full on rainy, but it definitely has that mist to it. You can't really see the rocks and the little islands out there as easily, which will make traveling a little bit more challenging because the rocks you have to climb over are going to be a little slick. But that's okay. These rocks were super slick. We managed to make it, but barely. Little baby, seeing enemies all on these super slick rocks. But boy, that was a challenge. We had to beat these before the tide came in, and it was definitely close. So, what we've been hiking is a lot like this. Some parts even trickier and slicker. Mist has rolled in. Very foggy day. But we've gotten through some of the worst of the rocks and now we're currently on a nice sandy beach. It is misty. Getting thicker by the hour. Look at that fog. Good thing we are on a boat right now. It's just getting thicker and thicker. I can't see any rocks or anything out there. Just mist. Looks like they look really neat. Very ethereal. So we're heading towards the rocks. We need to get past these rocks before the tide gets any higher. But it'll be interesting because look how foggy it still is. Right, we're just heading into deeper and deeper fog, but this beach looks so me. This is where it feels like we're in a different world.
There's an otter out there. Oh, it is an otter. I couldn't see because it's so far away. Oh, it's just chilling out. So freaking cute. Just made it over the rocks. And I thought I saw something out there. I couldn't quite tell what it was. So I zoomed in as far as I could. And that is totally an otter just chilling out. Oh my god, look at those feet. Oh. Yeah, hello. What a life. So peaceful. Seriously, every time I see otters, they just look very happy. And content with themselves. I'm surprised to find one here in the tide pools. But it's kind of rough water right now because the tide's coming in. I'm just over by the rocks, but water found a nice little peaceful spot. Oh, just chilling still. I love it. We saw the river otters last night. We get to see sea otter up close and personal today. There's the otter still. Hello. Getting ready to head back. We're about a mile and a half, two miles or so from where we want to camp for the evening. So I'm going to say goodbye to the little otter. So we have a really cool campsite way up in there that I've climbed it. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt to climb, but once we get up there, it's really neat. And of course, it's directly across from the ocean and we're on one of the other nice beaches. It's still super foggy so we can't see anything it's probably going to be foggy for the rest of the night but so far it hasn't actually started raining raining it's just been misting so we're hoping that keeps up and it's not too cold which is nice it's very pleasant but yeah we're going to go up there into where our campsite is it's a very very cool one i think probably my favorite campsite was the one last night but this one is a close second okay so this is what the campsite looks like when we go all the way up here it's really nice and quite large it's actually the biggest campsite we've stayed at so far on this trip there's the view the ocean so very misty and also interestingly enough Someone left a fishing pole here. Looks a little messed up, but my brother said he can probably fix it. Rather than I put our backs down already, but it is really pretty up in here. So much green. Now it's time to get set up. All right, so I have my tent set up with the exception of the rain fly, which I'm hanging to dry right here because it's wet from the mist from this morning. But I wanted to show you my tent. So behind my tent, there's a path. You can see all the gorgeous trees. There's still a lot of mist. But it's very, once you get over into that part of the campsite, it becomes very thick forest. I'm down through this path. There are like multiple have leaving from this campsite. So just step over a log. There we go. And there's another campsite over here. It's a smaller one. I think I like ours a little bit better, but there's, get this, another trail that leads up there. And I started following it earlier 
didn't see anything interesting, but I still checked it out. And then there's one more campsite. So if there are three campsites here, but nobody besides us. In fact, today I only saw five people total who were not related to me. There aren't a lot of people who are out and about right now. I don't know if it's due to people staying home for COVID reasons or, or what, but we've been taking advantage of having miles to ourselves. <laughs> and then there's also a little creek. Very pleasant little creek, which we will probably get some fresh water from tomorrow. And it goes all the way back. I saw some fish biting a little bit. There's definitely some, some fish and it's pretty clear water. And then of course, the view. Yeah, it's... It's pretty neat back here. Oh, one other thing. <laughs> I saw this. And for some reason it made me think of Wilson from Castaway. If you just had a bloody handprint for a face and a little floofy hair, you got yourself a Wilson. So, we got into camp earlier than we had the last previous nights, so I've been doing a little bit of reading, and I'm hoping to possibly finish this book tonight, maybe tomorrow morning, especially since right now it's pretty misty and gray and rainy outside, and also today was super just intense. We were climbing over rocks that were slick with kelp and we ended up going about eight miles or so of just very rugged terrain with some beaches mixed here and there, but for the most part it was just very intense. We were boarding, got to see an otter and some other sea critters. Also saw a raccoon and her babies. That was really cute. I didn't catch it on camera because it was just super quick and they were climbing up on some of the rocks that we were also climbing up. But it was a very enjoyable day, but definitely draining so I'm already tucked away for the evening in my tent listening to the sound of the ocean and just relaxing and hopefully I won't fall asleep before I get a good chunk of the way into the book. The Sasquatches have finally appeared which is awesome. Very excited about that and it's looking like it's going to be a very intense time and also I have a lot of things to say about this book mostly positive so I'll be doing hopefully a review of this tomorrow, maybe in my tent, or maybe I'll have to wait and do a full review when I get back um, to civilization. It depends on how long my battery life lasts on this camera, but we'll see. Anyway, I'm going to be digging into this book for the rest of the evening. I will see you guys tomorrow with my thoughts on this book. Good morning. So. I am very close to finishing this book. Seriously, I have about 40 pages left. Very intense, but I unfortunately have to uh, take a break because we are going to pack up and go to the next campsite. Today's a very light day, especially compared to how it's been uh, the last few days where it's been just a lot of miles over very heavy terrain. Today's gonna be a piece of cake. It's just gonna be beach walk and then some trails a little bit more inland into some of the foresty areas, but we're going to do a lot of stuff at the beach today, so very excited, but once I get to my location, I'm going to finish this bad boy up, and I am very excited. This has been a very, very enjoyable read, you know, with a few few things I'll point out um, in my full review that are a little weird, but for the most part, this is very fun. Definitely got some Sasquatch action in there. And, of course, I've been really fascinated with everything dealing with the Brunier explosion because that is something that is going to impact my area if it happens. And so I'm really pleased that Max Brooks did a very good job researching it. Hello! So, just doing a quick update. Today is going to be a much easier day than it has been before. Seriously, it's like two miles or something like that that we're doing today. Um, it's rainy and misty but hopefully it'll clear up later. It's kind of 50-50 on the weather, but 
we're hoping that's going to clear up and it'll be nice for us to do some beach stuff. I'm probably not going to go swimming. I brought my swim gear, but I'm a little bit of a wimp with cold water, so I don't think that's going to happen, but we're still going to probably fly a kite, do some cards, and of course I'm going to finish this bad boy up and then hopefully do a review for you guys because I think a lot of you should go check this out. Even, I mean, I haven't gotten to the ending yet, so we'll have to see how the ending is, but for the most part, it's a very enjoyable little thriller horror novel here, well researched, and I've been having fun, and it's been great reading this book in the woods, even though the bulk of this does take place in a community in the woods rather than the woods, and I've been spending a lot of time on the beaches. It's just still been fun to be reading an exciting book like this in nature and then tonight, when I'm finished with this, I'm going to get to The Wendigo and The Willows by Algernon Blackwood, which those are, I read them a long time ago, and I definitely do know that they are set in the wilderness, so. Anyway, I will check in with you guys later. We'll see what we're going to see today. There's been a lot of wildlife on this trip, which has been fantastic. I haven't been able to catch all of it on camera, but we'll see if there's anything else. I would love to see some seals and still some more starfish. I still have only seen those, those two that were by the anemone, so we'll see if we can spot any of those. And of course the otters. Love seeing the otters. I will... Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Beetle. We found several of them. This is the largest. Alright, and we're off. Just got about two miles or so to the next campsite where we're going. Still very foggy and misty, but not as much as yesterday. It looks like it's clearing up a little bit. We shall see. But it'll be a much, much easier hike for us today. Amazing how we go from Sandy Beach over there, just past this rock. Nelson, more rocks, the little cove. Oh, and there's somebody over there. First person we've seen today. So we're at the new campsite and we have two beaches on our side. We have one beach and we go over here. There it is. Another beach. It's a really neat spot, kind of in between two areas. We have a lot of forest. So we're going to get set up and then we'll have a good chunk of most of the day to hang out. Might try flying the kite. I'm going to finish reading my book, play some cards with my dad and bros. Just hang out and take it easy. This is the kind of stuff we were climbing over for eight miles one day, seven and a half another, five another. So you can see here, this kelp is extremely slick. And a lot of the places we need to get to, we could not go on land. We had to go at low tide or else we'd be stuck. This was the easy part. There are some rocks where we were just crawling over. Intense, but certainly rewarding. Got another hermit crab, much bigger than the hermit crabs I saw on the other beach. It's a big boy. This beach also has anemones, but they're smaller and spikier looking. Crow on the beach. I am going to go climb this big cliff rock outcropping, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to go ascend it. So I ascended it. This is the view from up here. If the weather improves, the sunset will be kind of over in there. So I'm hoping that the weather improves enough for me to catch the sunset. So it'll be really neat. Nice to catch it. Low length. 
fog. It's not completely low tide, but it's mostly low tide. You can see some tiny people out there. And our campsite is right in those trees. Pretty cool. There are so many thistles around here. Oh, we got a little bumblebee. Some, and some food to take back to the hive. I've also seen a lot of bumblebees around, which is awesome. I love bees. I took a couple classes in college on bees because I wanted to eventually be a beekeeper on the side of whatever I do. So it's been just very neat to see so many here. Found this on the beach. Looks staged, so I think somebody left this hoodie for a purpose. It's Twin Rocks Friends Camp. So, I doubt anyone from Twin Rocks Friends Camp is watching this video. But if you do happen to stumble upon this video, howdy! And some more water. Because we have been hiking and exploring a little more in the woods, although you can probably still hear the ocean nearby. It's raining a little bit. It turned from mist to full on rain not that long ago, but we're all still having a good time. Just see how moist everything is, how green and lush Olympic National Park, and just really a huge chunk of the Olympic Peninsula, is a rainforest. And when you're walking through paths like this, you really can tell. Like you can just you can almost feel the air on you. It's a nice, pleasant temperature. Not too hot, not too cold, even though it's raining. It's not a cold rain, but it's not a hot rain. It's like mid 60s, which it's ideal for me. I like it a little on the cooler side, but not too cold. So we're just going to get some water. Just kind of want to show you what the path that we've been taking on looks like. Seriously, so lush and green. There's moss on the trees, a lot of fog. We're going to end up going to a lake. There's a lake nearby. So we're going to get some water, and then once we gear up and put our day packs on, we're not going to have our big packs, but we have our day packs, because it's really nice to have a little bit more opportunity to kind of hang out and relax, because we've had a pretty strenuous trip where we don't get a lot of downtime. I've, you know, read in the evenings, but for the most part, we've just been traveling all day. But today, we got here, it was like, 2 p.m. so we've had all this time. There's a little campsite there. Then we end up going back to where the creek is. It's around the corner. And now we're back here. So looks like it's gotten foggier but the rain has stopped which is awesome some interesting tracks along the beach and I'm not sure exactly what they are. They kind of look like dog prints, but only two only two feet. So I'm not sure what this is, so if any of you have any idea, it'd be awesome. And it goes from quite a ways and it looks like whatever it was, it's fairly heavy because they sound pretty far into the sand and some of the other tracks we've seen tend to like the animals tend to be lighter on the sand so we will have to do some research into what these are but they're really interesting and they continue on up into the forest so we're heading up to to lake ozette and there's the beach and then we're going up this way 
coming down to the forest through those trees. Currently, we are on a primitive trail heading to Lake Ozette. Primitive trail means that is not maintained, so we can be in for some surprises along the way, such as lots of mud. And these little thin pieces are very slick. How the trees have this very interesting moss growing on it. To me, they kind of look like fingers. It smells really good in this forest. Amazingly fresh. Some mushrooms here, thrown on a log. Got some mushrooms here. I think they're called golden something, but I can't quite identify them. They're really cool. We discovered spinal cord washed up on the beach. Another creepy find on this cursed beach. So I found this absolutely gorgeous in perfect condition sand dollar here on the beach. Obviously dead. The live sand dollars, they have little tubey feet and when you see them moving on the sand it looks a little weird but you can pick them up and then you feel the little tube feet kind of tickling your hand. And they have a different color, they're more like a light, maybe like a mauve color. But yeah, I've, I haven't seen a sand dollar like this in a long time. With a coast like this, it's very rare to find them intact like this because the tides are pretty rough and the water is very intense. And these things are very fragile. But I thought it was really cool. And there's also some prints in the sand, too. Honestly, this kind of looks like we're on a different planet. It looks like this anemone, which is closed up right now, caught a crab. Crab is very dead. And then anemones having a nice lunch. I don't know if it's going to show up on camera, but this anemone has like a rainbow sheen to it. It was like rainbow sherbet. That very like light pastel rainbow. So cool. It's also a really big one. That got a bunch of snails. A bunch of tiny little hermit crabs. And a limpet. Of course, barnacles. There's multiple different species, all just on one rock. It's hard to show, but this is by far the biggest crab I've seen alive on this beach, this particular beach. I saw one that was slightly bigger, but this is a this is a huge guy. Those choppers could really do some damage. Hey, Krabby! Oh, some scuttling under this rock. I'm gonna leave him be. I found a dried up sea urchin on the beach, which is interesting because I haven't seen any living sea urchins. I've been looking for them. And I think this is a big difference between the water I'm most familiar with is the Puget Sound. And we're at the Pacific Ocean. So I think. I'm used to seeing more sea urchins and less sea anemones. I think that might be a difference between Puget Sound and Pacific Ocean. Not sure exactly if that's scientific, it's just from my observations. It's the only sign of a sea urchin I've seen in any of the tide pools. But I've seen so many sea anemones. And I haven't seen any sea stars except for the pair that were by the big tide pool with like the 50 sea anemones inside. Okay, so I am getting ready to read the final 40 pages of this book. Things are getting very intense, and I'm very excited to see how things wrap up. Also, Mostar is 100% my favorite character. Just want to point that out, and I would love it if she makes it to the end, but I don't 
we'll have to see, but she's an awesome, awesome character. I'll do more in the full review, but so far, still very enjoyable, and they're very exciting. So, we didn't end up getting a chance to go to Ozette Lake today because the hike ended up being way too long, but that's okay. We are doing some stuff around camp, got to check out more of the area. So, going on a little Roman excursion, checking everything out. Bears, I'm sure they mean Sasquatch. Plenty of Sasquatch in the area. No, but we actually have seen several bears on this trip, so the sign is very, very accurate. Thankfully, we have bear canisters, and that has helped us. We haven't had any surprise visitors. Found a mushroom with things growing on it. What the heck? So, I just finished the book, and wow. I will be doing a full review on it tomorrow, but all I can say for now, because I want to sleep on it and think a little bit more, get my thoughts in order, is that I really did enjoy it quite a bit, so stay tuned for the review in the morning. And now I'm getting back to Aldrin and Blackwood's Ancient Sorcerers and Other Weird Stories by reading, of course, The Wendigo and The Willows. I'm going to do The Wendigo first, and then I'm going to get to The Willows, so I'll get you guys posted on that as well. Have a great night. See you tomorrow. Hey guys! Alright, so I finished Devolution by Max Brooks and I wanted to do my full book review out here in the woods of Olympic National Park. This has been a very enjoyable read. I finished it after a couple of days. It was really, really neat to be able to read a chunk every night while I was in the forest because I did a lot of hiking along the beach, but all of our campsites were a little bit in the woods, and this book does take place in the woods. Pretty much the story about this is that Mount Rainier erupts, and there's this little town called Green Loop, which is one of those very small villages that is super high-tech. It is very, I would say, smart in terms of, like, things are delivered by drone, everything is supposed to be very efficient, and everybody's very connected into the grid. To the point where they don't even own a hammer because they can just summon somebody up to, you know, a handyman whenever they need it. And unfortunately, this sets the, the villagers up for failure when Rainier erupts and completely cuts them off the grid. Not only are they far in the woods, and there's only one road in and out that ends up getting just totally destroyed by a lahar, but they end up being completely cut off on the grid and none of them have any survival skills except for one character named Mostar, who is my favorite character, by the way. I really liked her character a lot. She, I believe, is supposed to be Yugoslavian slash Eastern European of some sort who survived war and genocide, so she has this strength to her and she is very tough and I really liked her character a lot. She basically saves the day multiple times in this. And really, the story is very simple. This town's cut off, people start to freak out a little and go into survival instincts, which is good until a family of Sasquatches comes and they want to take everyone out. Because the Sasquatch, for the most part, they live in peace they eat meat and they're hunters, but they haven't had to feast on humans because they've had enough food. But with Rainier, unfortunately exploding and erupting, it takes their food supply out. And there was also really bad berry harvest, so there's like a lot of things adding up. Like, no one bad thing led to the catastrophe that happened. It was a series of multiple uh, failures and they just added up. And I think the main theme of this book I really agree with is that um, Max Brooks is pointing out the downside of being too dependent on technology and high tech because, I mean, if anyone had had like a gun, a dog, toolkit, any sort of survival skills, it may have made things a little bit easier because, you know, they were so dependent on the one-click Amazon shopping, drone delivery, smart houses that they didn't really have the skills to survive without the help of Mostar and she had the skills because of her 
living through a very traumatic war and genocide a long time ago. So I really appreciated that aspect. The characters, Katie is the main character. So in this story, it's told in a couple different perspectives. There's like a found journal element, which I thought was really neat. And then there's like a few series of interviews. There's one with Josephine Snell, who's a Native American search and rescue officer who gives us a lot of background on the Sasquatch and Bigfoot lore and primates. Um, you really get a sense of what these creatures are like. And I thought that was very interesting. And so I liked her segment. And then there is Katie's brother, who also is being interviewed. And of course, there's the narrator who's supposed to be putting all of this together. Um, and it comes together pretty nicely. I, I liked the way it was told. It was, you know, I'm really into like found footage or, you know, found diaries. So I, I liked that aspect. Um, I think Katie as a character was annoying towards the beginning. And it's not because she has anxiety. It was interesting to see a character with anxiety, but she was very judgmental at times. And that was a little difficult to read. It was a little bit difficult to get behind her at first because she is not a very strong character and neither is her husband, Dan. And like their relationship was kind of, I don't think was fully developed. Like it's kind of shown that they are not really into each other. They have some marital problems of just being sort of distant. Dan is a bit of a freeloader to be completely honest. He just kind of blazes around on his iPad and she's the one who supports them, but she never confronts him about it because she's super non-confrontational. And so is Dan. Um, as the story progresses, there is some character development. Katie does become a stronger character. I think it's almost a little bit jarring at times though, where she'll just go from being like, I'm you know, not comfortable with this to also be like, oh, I'm gonna start making weapons. Um, I think it could have been transitioned a little bit better. I think that she kind of made these character developments a little, little suddenly at times. And really, you know, she and Dan survived because of Mostar at the beginning. And, you know, Mostar, she, seriously, read this book because of her. And also Josephine Snell, who has nothing to do with the journal entries, she is part of the interview. Um, I liked her as well. I thought that she had a lot of really excellent points about people going out into the wilderness, expecting it to be just filled with, you know, beautiful nature and Disney-esque animal life. When really, if you aren't prepared, even though I love nature, and I know a lot of us do, but if you aren't prepared for it, especially in the Pacific Northwest, our woods are really challenging. You can die of exposure, you can die of a multitude of different things. So, you gotta be prepared for it. And I, you know, I liked that point as well. I think the weakest aspect of this book, besides um, kind of Katie's character at the beginning, um, was I felt like there are a couple like like I'm not sure if Frank's interviews added a whole lot to the story I mean it gave some background to it but I think of the three so there was uh, there's the journal entries by Katie there were the um, interviews by Josephine Snell and then there was Frank McRae which is Katie's brother I think his parts were the weaker of the three main storylines but I still enjoyed it. I mean, it's a lot of fun and it's definitely pretty graphic. Um, I mean, there's one scene where a head is described as full on bursting and a person being turned into pulp. And you definitely do get some Sasquatch action. It takes a little while for you to really see them come into the story, but once they come into the story, they're definitely in and it's quite exciting. I I enjoyed myself reading this. I, I'm very glad I brought it on my backpacking trip because it was really fun to read a spooky story like this and then go to bed and then last night for instance it was super windy and I kept hearing the tent shake and I'm like oh my god is this that squash <laughs> or the Blair Witch one of the two but no it's just the wind um, so I definitely do recommend it. Um, it you know it's I would probably give it like a 4.25 out of 5 stars very enjoyable and I do recommend it it just had you know a couple of those issues like um, you know, for the most part, I liked the female characters more than the male characters because I just don't think that the male characters were as developed as much. Like, Frank, I think, was the most developed because, um, like, Dan, he he has a character arc that I liked. Like, he steps up, and I think that was great to see. But then, sort of, like, the rest of the men kind of weren't... Like, Tony, he's the, the 
brain behind Green Loop just doesn't really have much of a role besides just freaking out and kind of ending up having a mental breakdown over this. And then, yeah, it was sort of interesting to see some of the characters. A few of them I felt like were a little stereotypical Seattle hippie, yuppie type people. Um, but they, they, they get better as the story goes on, I would say. And there's definitely some representation. We've got a lesbian couple and their daughter, Palomino, which I feel so sorry for that little girl that her name is Palomino, but she goes by Pal. Um, the, the characters explain that it's a placeholder for her to choose her own name when she's older, but still it's kind of a funny name. Um, and then also Frank, Katie's brother, um, is gay. So like there's, there's a little bit of representation on that. And I think that there's one character who is supposed to be African American, but it's, it's never implied. In fact, really people's races aren't necessarily implied except for Josephine Snell is Native American. She's Navajo. So that was also cool to have that representation as well. Um, so I definitely recommend it. If you're looking for a fun Sasquatch story, or there's also the big survival aspect that I really liked because Rainier is, you know, Rainier erupting would impact my family. And I, even though we aren't in the direct towns that would be impacted by like the Lahars and the Lava Flow, we're further north. The ash would still impact us and some of the um, other stuff that, yeah, Max Brooks goes into in the story, we would also probably impact a bit like the disruption to the food supply, maybe not being able to get out, um, riots, stuff going on in Seattle, even though I live further out from Seattle, like about 25 miles or so, I would still probably impact it. So this was like a very personal story to me. I recognized a lot of the things in the story, all the towns and the names, except for Green Loop, which is a fictionalized little, very small village. Um, high-tech village that's fictionalized and it's never actually told exactly where it is but anyway I recommend it if you are looking for a nice fun summer read a wilderness read creature feature you name it this is a great book definitely would give it probably a 4.25 out of five stars very good not perfect but still very highly recommended so Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, rate, and subscribe. I will tune in with you guys later as we pack up our camp. Bye. Ooh, we've got... Some antlers coming out of the tent. Found some more deer on the beach this morning. Got a buck here. Which I've seen a lot of does, but I haven't seen a buck. We've got another one over there. Ooh, that one also is a buck! Got two boys. It is. With the very tiny little antlers sticking out of it. And the fish. It's right by our campsite, right. nibbling on some food. Hello, handsome. <laughs> oh, and there are some people who are a little too close to those deer. They should uh, move. You should definitely stay. Deer are pretty docile, but the bucks can tend to be a little more aggressive. Oh, look at you! They're super... they're close, but we're still in safe distance away from them. Just nibbling on the beach. That's so cute. <laughs> Nap time. Gosh. So, so cute. cute. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. I. They may very well be sitting down to just take a nap on the beach. Found some more bones at our campsite as we're packing up in the morning. All right, so we are getting ready to head out. The bucks are still chilling on the beach. I got a little bit closer, but I'm still not 
close enough to be a problem. And they just kind of looked over at us, and that's it. They really don't have any fear. They seem to be very chill, so it's been really, really neat to see them and have them kind of, in a way, share our campsite for the last 45 minutes or so. Farewell, dear. So we're on this very long, we were calling it a boardwalk, through the forest as we hike out. You can see it's so lush and green. We've got another two miles or so. Most likely more of this. Yeah. Alright, we're climbing the bridge. We are very close to the truck now at this point. You can see the ocean water leading out. From now on, I'm just going to set my mile per hour mark. One, four, um. End of the truck. Another creek over here. Here we go. Back at the parking lot. So we made it back on one piece. It was a fantastic journey. We're going to be hopping in the car and getting ready to go grab us our first real meal that has not been rehydrated in close to a week. So I will check in with you guys later. But it was a fantastic journey. So worth it. Saw a lot of awesome wildlife, beautiful beaches. It was wonderful. <laughs> Oh, look who it is! Hello! You are so excited! Hi! You excited to see us? Hello! Oh, good boy! Did you miss us? Oh yeah, I got a scratch mark! Hello! Hello! Kisses? <laughs> oh, what a good boy. What a good boy you are, Chocolate. <laughs> That's the end of our trip. <laughs>